now that you feared the mm. uh, final prof and now it's like your focus is on getting the pg exam done so what was the first step that you took in the beginning did you plan out how you'll go about your preparation what was the basis of that planning so for that my basic plan was to have a three revision strategy that my first reading r3 strategy as i like to call it is that the first reading is that extensive reading and then i consolidate that into one copy per subject or two copies basically a notes so after that i will not touch any textbook in reading two in second reading i'll just revise that and third reading is the revision of the high yield material which i think that is high yield from my point of view from that particular Subject. set of notes that i have so that is what my plan was uh, in an mcq based exam if you know even a little bit about a topic and you've read it somewhere once before it somewhere clicks in the time of the paper so i tended to widen my source in the sense that i would do uh, the consolidated revision from multiple coaching places so that in turn would make it a little bit vaster in its reach uh, but it's again all consolidated information the last minute revision whatever you end up getting notes from your coaching places that's what i would do towards the ending and i would start with previous year questions do that consolidated notes and head to the next uh, subject so like this i spent from um, feb is where my internship started till about august is where i finished one reading of uh, all the subjects and finally in the last 3 to 4 months i did three revisions of the same so i broke it down into one and a half one and a half and one month in the last 4 months i did three revisions like so and again towards the ending you remove subjects which you think will have you low yield and you read only those which you know will have importance so again like that you will be able to realize with the time what subjects to remove again all of this is guided primarily by your previous year questions you look at the distribution you look at um, which subjects are being asked more frequently and accordingly you can filter out the ones that you don't need revision for and uh, as i would read there are often things you come across like certain criteria certain numbers which you will inevitably forget unless you read one day before the exam so these snippets of information which again these have to be included in the previous year questions these snippets of information which are very forgettable is what i would save in one more place that i would read one day before the exam i had a folder for one day before the exam i had a folder for one hour before the exam so again you need to have such consolidated information ready for revision at the last instant what we i think all agree upon is that it's planning at the beginning for the year then planning the first 6 7 months as it is the first preparation i think it's all about preparing your material for revision so you need to have a 10 month 11 month plan you need to have a monthly plan then you have to have a 7 day uh, plan yeah. so, and then what you'll get up in the morning and do so basically that planning will help you be confident about you know what i'm going to do next day it gives you direction it avoids you know randomly searching ki aaj you know what i'm going to uh, study today and what you don't revise so you mentioned uh, almost four uh, revisions by the time you read so it's not about only getting more and more information see you reading till the last day but it really doesn't matter if you have not consolidated it so what was the role of your uh, you know previous year questions how did you imbibe pyqs in your preparation yes so before uh, reading so suppose there is a test coming up of a particular subject so before preparing for that subject i used to make sure that i uh, i do the five the last five years previous year questions of that uh, subject so that i get to know what are the important topics that are asked frequently and believe me there are no new topics which have been asked maybe the questions are not repeated right. but the topics remain fairly the same and especially for an exam like ini and neat pg the topics have been same throughout and the saying goes what was asked is asked and will be asked yes. it stands true definitely for these exams definitely for all competitive exams i must say and so uh, before a test and discussion i used to do pyqs then used to make a list of these are the important topics and again read those from my own source which i Uh, read earlier now for the first and second pro since i did not join a coaching i relied on the review books but if you have your own set of notes or your own coaching material those are uh, good enough you just need to know what are the important topics for each and every subject so uh, there is one question that i uh, often ask is did you feel that did you make any mistakes of course you are uh, ranked to an ini ct but even then there are uh, some mistakes which you feel or something that you said lagged in your you know the material that you got from the uh, coaching places something that you could change and you know you'll suggest uh, the students to not make that uh, mistake from in their preparation 
इन माई प्रिपरेशन इनिशियली आई वॉज गिवन दिस एडवाइस कि वॉट एवर यू गेट रॉन्ग कीप इट इन वन प्लेस एंड रिवाइज इट सो देन आई एंड अप अमासिंग ऑल द थिंग्स दैट आई कूड एंट रिमेंबर इन वन प्लेस आफ्टर लाइक टू थ्री मंथ्स डाउन माई प्रिपरेशन वैन आई वुड रिवाइज दिस इट वुड ऑलवेज गिव मी लाइक अ मिनी पैनिक अटैक बिकॉज देर सो मच आई डिट नो देन बट देन वन सीनियर केम एंड टोल्ड मी कि इफ यू कैंट रिमेंबर इट and if it is something that you are not able to answer maybe it's also not important for the exam <laughs> so this was one thing that i need to tell you that guide your um, consolidated notes based on previous year questions and not based on what you get wrong all the time so that's like a obviously some things you can't remember and some things are not asked because they don't expect you to remember them also so this is one thing and second thing is um, nowadays there are a lot of image based questions so again keeping a question bank with nice images and consolidated clinical scenarios is again a pro point so when did you watch your videos did you watch them in internship or you watch them in your mbbs curriculum the ones you know be you prepared from did you watch any videos or you felt no i just did the question bank and the notes and i prepared from the revision books or did you watch all the videos of some you know mm. place for where to coaching from How did you approach the videos? The video, the videos is something I watched in my third and fourth year only. Like in internship, I didn't watch much of them because again in internship I felt it was about speed and finishing things faster more than finishing things correctly. <laughs> so in my third and fourth year, I watched the videos, and in my internship, it's mainly revising notes. Question bank, I never managed to complete. Some of them are very vast. So again, question bank is something you do in your own free time for your. Um, third and fourth year across that you can do question banks uh, but don't finishing them is not really an objective at that point of time you can do them as and when you get time but don't be stressed if you can't finish them so then how did you really revise i mean i always mm. feel that the first preparation is all about creating revision material yeah for, for the, the second next then, revision yeah. yeah so it's a good idea to a you can mark the stuff so suppose you have a coaching material with you, you or you have a review book whatever your source is so the stuff that was not uh, required or not asked i simply used to cross it like if you open my books you will see pages being crossed like this so at the outset when you are revising okay you know ki ye nahi padhna hai theek hai so you don't waste your time on unnecessary stuff that's how you know what to read and what not to read now there are some topics uh, let's say breast a uh, breast cancer in which they ask things a little extensively and you might need to use Uh, maybe two sources three sources to compile stuff so what i used to do i used to take a blank sheet of paper write extra stuff on it and using the glue i used to stick it in that notes notes as well so the important stuff i uh, knew that this is a complete stuff that i have to revise in the next sitting maybe right now i don't remember everything but when i come back to this it will form an image in my mind and i'll get to remember everything how was the final lap before the exam what what did you do in those last 15 20 days when you really want to make everything you know mm-hmm. fresh and revise the you know volatile topics so what was your preparation for that period yeah so i made sure that during the last 10 to 15 days i don't give any tests because uh, i believe that whatever test preparation was done is done Now, if I give any test, even if the scores are bad, it will only demotivate me. And if the scores are good, it's not really reflective of my main uh, exactly. rank in the exam. So I made sure that I don't give any test in the last ten to fifteen days, and I relied more on minors. I rever relied more on first and second profs. A because they are asked more in the exam, their weightage is more as compared to the amount of stuff that you have to read. And also, it had been a lot of long time since first and second year when I had read those subjects, so I wanted them to remain fresh in my memory. So I relied more on minors and first and second year subjects in the last ten to fifteen days. How did you go about the test series? Did you do some grand tests, small tests? You know, how did you plan these tests? Because I feel they are important, but you know, not something that you should go gaga about. But mm. what was the importance of these tests, which was you know not just questions but a proper. complete grand test or a you know smaller subject wise test did you plan them on the way did you do them or you know what did you utilize them for mm-hmm. so once i had finished uh, the first reading of my first two year subjects uh, that's when i started grand test so that's around like april i think april march um, so then i started grand test and i made it a point to do one every week so i had like sundays saved for grand test and mondays for analysis of grand test and this i would do on a weekly basis only like one or two weeks i skipped but i started a little late like around april 
around I started. So again, doing too many grand tests from one source can also be counterproductive because you get too familiar with their question pattern. So um, doing too much is a problem. Doing too less is also fine. Like a, quite a few of my batchmates didn't do much of grand tests and still they got good enough ranks. So again, grand tests serve as a way to motivate you, telling you you don't know this, you don't know this, so read. So it is um, a good motivating force. You should take it as that only and not as a reflection of your real rank. I remember even in the last grand test I gave, I got a rank of around 200 or something like that, 200, 250. So again, it can be disheartening at that point of time, but um, it's not really reflective of what happens in the actual exam. So take it for what it is. That is just a motivating force for you to read and do it according to what schedule is comfortable. For me, it was once per week. Sometimes I would skip two weeks, but uh, mostly it was once in a week.